time for the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show brings you famous celebrities and amazing people from all over the world. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. So sit back and relax and enjoy the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Looking for a professional website without breaking your budget? Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, and also on iTunes, Apple, Google Play. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on YouTube channel and take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. We're here with a wonderful woman from St. Petersburg, Florida, the author of Woman of Many Names, available on Amazon.com. It's about a woman who helped shape the history of our nation and uh, with ties to Daniel Boone, George Washington, and a role model to uh, Joan of Arc and uh, memorialized in a very interesting part of the state. And she's also known by a special name, the Trail of Tears, and um, also one of the directors had serious regrets about not making a movie about this special person. Without further ado, we have a fine lady here who's um, taken interest in a woman of many names, and you can also check out the website, womanofmanynames.com, and here she is, the woman of many names, but she'd rather go by just one. Ladies and gentlemen, from the beautiful state of Florida, Deborah Yates. That's the one name. Deborah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, good evening, Mike. What a what a splendid rendition there. Yeah, <laughs> I, that's great. I love it. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If you had many names, you could have told me I go by this, I go by that. But, um, you know, just you being Deborah Yates, you're the author of Woman of Many Names, available on Amazon. And it's about a woman who helped shape the history of the nation, ties to Daniel Boone, George Washington, serves as role model to Joan of Arc and memorialized in a very interesting part of the state. And before we get into all that, uh, tell us how I got started. Well, I actually was just on a road trip driving around, and I was on my way to um, Georgia, and I was driving through Tennessee, and I thought, oh, I need to go in there to that state forest. I think there's things there that I need to discover. And um, because the Cherokee um, National Forest runs through pretty much, uh, you know, the central and eastern part of Tennessee. And I mean, I knew I was Cherokee, um, na- um, born uh, uh, in my blood. And, you know, it, with I tell people that it doesn't matter how much Native American you have in you, you've got to drop, you've got to drop. Uh-huh. And that's, I think, something to be very proud of. Our, our heritage goes back to, you know, well before the uh, uh, white man and from England and France and the folks from Spain and stuff started you know, really exploring uh, this territory. And, um, you know, to know that your people walked this ground, you know, thousands of years ago that we live on today, you know, it's an honor to have that in um, instilled in you. And even though I wasn't raised in the Native American culture, I find it interesting now looking back, you know, I'm 60-something, and um, the influences that it has in my life today, um, you know, it just amazes me how those cultural things, you know, have been carried down through our family, like cornbread and beans and, you know, just different even foods, Mm -hmm. as well as, you know, maybe the way we have thought processes. And, you know, I think a lot of Native Americans have a natural, um, you know, and, uh, you know, we're, we're, have a a tendency you know to fear 
you know, government and different things like this. Mm -hmm. And that's a really hard statement for me to make. I almost didn't even want to get it out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I find I understand. it to be very true. I uh -huh. find it to be very true today, too. Mm -hmm. and, and also, too, now I just want to clarify, and did you say you're part of the uh, Native American Cherokee, or was it just, um, you know, you I say you're born Cher in... Oh, you are. Okay. I, I am Cherokee uh, Indian. Uh, my grandfather um, came off the uh, reservation or the nation out in uh, Tahlequah and um, when he was a little boy. In the uh, early 1900s, there was like a mass exodus from the Oklahoma territories. You know, it was very hot and dusty and windy and not a lot of things were going on. And the people were starving to death basically you know they were you know malnourished and couldn't find jobs and if you don't have jobs you can't get food and so as a very young man I believe he was about 12 he had been orphaned at um, nine and he told us both his parents had died so a story we accepted full wholeheartedly and um, he came to live with his sister uh, in Winter Haven Florida which is not too far from where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, he did what he had to do to survive. He left there. He never went back. And from there, you know, he migrated to Ohio where he raised a family. And that Native American uh, part of him, uh, he hid that. We, we weren't to discuss our Native American heritage. It was something, you know, that, that I didn't find out till I was probably 12, 13 years old. Wow. You know, I just wondered where these dark looks came from. And, um, you know, my skin, I'd, you know, go, I'd lay out for an hour and I'd be as darker than my friends that had been laying out for two weeks. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't understand this, but oh, well, I'll go with it because I don't have to sit out in the sun so much. Mm -hmm. But, um, and I had a natural love for the outdoors. I always rooted for the Indians and the cowboy and Indian shows, you know, it's like, and I never really understood why. And I had an affinity for wolves and for swans and just all kinds of animals, horses. I, it was just, it was just me. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to be with my animals, play with my animals, groom my animals, you know, feed them, water them, everything that goes with it. At a very young age, I had a lot of responsibilities. So, you know, it, and that all works back towards that old thing where, you know, you're, you know, socially, you know, things go awry. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the times then it wasn't a good thing to be an American Indian. So, that was hidden for a very, very long time. I've got a cousin that contacted me a year ago, said I had no idea we were Native American. Mm -hmm. now, um, now, 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 today, where the uh, Native Americans have been uh, recognized uh, at this time, thanks to social media and, um, you know, changing attitudes and everything. And do you think this presence of uh, bringing it out uh, from, from way back when has actually helped you guys? Or is it being uh, put on as more of a bullseye as more criticism you know you know you've, you've got to look at that a myriad of ways this country was founded on what it was founded on we cannot change that mm -hmm. no matter how many um statues we tear down no matter no matter what we do no matter if we stop teaching what our true history is in schools doesn't change our history mm-hmm it is still what it is, and, and I've said for years, if we don't teach our history, we are going to repeat it and look at this craziness that's going on these days around us. And I I think it's a double-edged sword in a lot of ways. It I, I've had a lot of uh, my white friends um, tell me that it re has really opened their eyes, you know, and they kind of can empathize a little bit more with Native Americans after reading my book. And um, Nancy Ward was such a magnificent woman who I believe God placed where he placed her at the exact time in history that she needed to be. Mm -hmm. I believe George Washington was the father of this country and Nanya he, Nancy Ward, was the mother of this mm -hmm. country. That is amazing. Um, 
That was amazing. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about Nancy Ward and uh, how you got in writing a book in just a minute. You're listening to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Apple, Google Play. And subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. We're here with author Deborah Yates. She's the author of Woman of Many Names, available on Amazon. And it's about... Nancy Ward, as she uh, just mentioned, a woman who helped shape the history of our nation. And, of course, before we get into uh, Nancy Ward, and what was the precise moment that influenced you into writing a book and the woman of many names, which is um, Nancy Ward? Well, actually, it was a very long, drawn-out process, and I was just making notes for the family, and I wanted to make sure that my nieces and nephews from now until, you know, there is no more Earth or no more Yates relatives, uh, that they would know who their their great-great-great-great-great-great-great-great-grandmother was and how she played an important role in history and shaping this nation and how we should be so very proud to be descended of such a woman and be a descendant of the Cherokee Nation. And, um, you know, I'd, it was not meant to be a book. It was just absolutely written for my family. And I had a gal transcribe my notes for me and, um, you know, put it on the disk and all that stuff on the computer. And I'm very not skilled at computer skills. I had to have help for sure. And that's how it all started. And the lady that transcribed it said, oh, you, you know, this needs to be a book. People need to know this stuff, Deborah." And she goes, you know, it really was eye-opening for me and so at that point I sat down and you know took an objective look at it and tried to um, you know decide what to do when I decided to proceed I just started making phone calls and reading everything I could get my hands on ordering every book I could find on her to you know to find out what was written about her already and then I took the family stories that I had written down about the, our grandmother and combined it all together and and made um, woman of many names and it's the story of Nancy Ward she was um, the reason it has that title in the very beginning of the book it will give you a list of approximately 13 and I found a couple more names and or titles that Nancy Ward went by through her lifetime and, um, you know, the more I run into different people, you know, I and family members, I hear a little bit different stories, too, that, you know, that I was able to weave into those writings. Now, it is absolutely written as fiction because some of that stuff is, you know, you have to make a book interesting, don't you know? Mm -hmm. so, exactly. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I can't exactly know everything that's in that book, but I think I got a pretty good idea what my granny was up to. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, pretty much most of it pretty good every once in a while. Might have been. It, it, it sounds like it, too. In the first part, it, she has ties to Daniel Boone and George Washington. You were going to talk about that. And now, yeah. um, in, in, course, yeah. in course, she saved um, George Washington as well, too. And uh, tell us, uh, how did she have ties with Daniel Boone, Boone and George Washington? Okay, well, Daniel Boone was known as Wide Mouth in the, um, amongst our people. And that was because they thought he was, like, way crazy. Mm -hmm. He would go through the mountains singing at the top of his lungs and, you know, belting out these big notes and stuff. So that's how he got the name Wide Mouth. And um, um, I believe they met somewhere amongst in there when she would have been in probably her early to mid-20s. And then um, as time progressed and as the country grew, um, Daniel Boone was hired by the Transylvania Company to um, open up the trails through the Cumberland Gap and open up Kentucky. Well, what happened was, was 
that was kind of our hunting grounds up in there, our summer hunting grounds. So it was kind of like Cherokee land, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Shawnee were in Ohio, and, you know, Kentucky was pretty, you know, everybody hunted there. So um, it was considered Cherokee grounds. So he bought Kentucky, Kentucky from Nancy Ward. Wow, that's amazing, too. And did he, did he mean enough, enough for assistance when it came to uh, dealing with the Cherokees and um, buying this territory? Or were they like, yeah, sure, go ahead and buy it? Um, you know, I think that over time that his, repre- uh, that his reputation preceded him, uh, he did have some uh, not-so-nice dealings with the Shawnee, <laughs> mm-hmm. who also was there. But uh, I believe as far as the Cherokee were concerned, they really – um, liked him, um, and everybody thought he was touched a little bit. So mm. when you were touched in the head, they didn't bother to kill you. So that's huh. part of why he did what he did. Inter- and, um, Interesting. What, what was the, what's the difference between the uh, Cherokee and the, and the Shawnee as well, too? Uh, you know, we're all descended from, like, the Iroquois, the Delaware, the Powhatans. We're all technically the same blood, but as each one would shoot off, you know, they just got it, went by a different name. But okay. we're all of the same blood. Okay, got it, too. all of the same and, blood. And she also talked about George Washington as well, too. And uh, how was she connected with George Washington? Well, the um, with George Washington, all I can prove is that we know that she negotiated treaties through all the areas of Virginia and the Carolinas and Tennessee that made it able for Mr. Washington, George Washington, to be able to traverse those areas unencumbered. Had those treaties not been in place that allowed him to do that, he would have met with very large resistance of many contingents of many Native American tribes. So it was, um, I believe that through Thomas Jefferson, was the main crux of how you get back from Nancy Ward to George Washington. Um, there was a, um, and I wish I could remember the name of it, but I can't. There was a, a meeting called for uh, 13 or 14 um, chiefs in the Cherokee Nation and, and those areas up in there. So they went to meet up for this meeting and they were all taken prisoners. Mm. Nancy Ward and uh, Oconisto, which was, you know, one of our great leaders also, war chief, and who happened to be running around loose was uh, her other uncle, Atacula Kula. Mm-hmm. Now, Atacula Kula um, was able to negotiate, and as well as along with Thomas Jefferson, secured Nancy Ward's release from that meeting. Also, who was um, allowed to leave also was Oconestoa. They were the only two that were allowed to leave that meeting. As soon as they basically left that meeting or that prison, they were being held prisoner. Um, they were all killed. Oh, no. Oh, yes. They, they, the, the, other, the other 11 uh, were all, all died after that. So my grandmother was special. And there has been, um, I've seen a copy of it, and, I, and somebody did me a big favor one day and cleaned up my computer for me and de- deleted it, a, a letter that Nancy Ward had written to George Washington that was found amongst Thomas Jefferson's possessions. That, so that, there is a trail somewhere. It's just finding it all and getting my hands back on it. I have seen it. Um, she was well-schooled. Um, her her birth had been kind of like foretold that there would be a, a a great woman that would rise up out of the wolf clan to lead her people to greatness. And um, when my grandmother was born, um, my her her grandmother took her to bathe her in the river, and the which is customary among among the Cherokee. We're very cleanly people. We liked our daily baths. You took a bath every day. Mm-hmm. You did not want to stink. And the men pulled their hair out. <laughs> that's a given. <laughs> the, men, the men pulled their hair out, too, because that's how we tracked those settlers and the colonialists and the French and the English. We could smell them. Huh. They could literally, we could literally smell the stench. Because, you know, they didn't believe in bathing every day. Once a week, you were lucky. So, 
we, we're the ones that actually taught those folks how to bathe, okay? Wow. Uh, yeah, an, an interesting, unusual tidbit there, pretty much. But, yeah, see, I mean, you were up royalty if you bathed every day, and they didn't even like to bathe every day. So, um, And those two un- uh, those uncles also went to England on a ship called the Fox back in the uh, very um, in the earlier 1700s to hang out with uh, King jo- King George the third i believe it was it, it, it sounds uh, like king george the third it was the third and you are correct thank you <laughs> well there was so many of them you know these king georges anyways um so it was kind of another interesting experience that our family had had and that's how quote unquote you know um their father was named um the emperor huh interesting of America. that's what uh, the king of england decided to call him so when they went over there they took a coon hat a coon skin type hat mm-hmm. and um gave it to king george and uh he called it the crown of tenacity to see tennessee was supposed to be tenacity huh not interesting tennessee. <laughs> yeah it is isn't it Oh, my goodness. Ohio means beautiful river, and I'm not sure what language that came out of, but that's one of the native mm. languages. Ohio meant beautiful river. So it's, um, you know how, uh, you know, they kept a lot of our names, uh, a lot of the cities, like Etwa means muddy, muddy, muddy water. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just, you know, just interesting little things like that. But um, if you, you know, take the time to, you know, just Google Nancy Ward, you know, the, the information that pops up is completely crazy. And some of it very true, some of it not so true. And, you know, and I'm sure there's a lot of embellishment that went on back and forth. But, you know, I have to believe that, that what my grandfather told me was true, that my grandmother knew George Washington. So, you know, that's my family lore. And, you know, there you go. Amazing, too. And, of course, uh, you could say about Nancy Ward, she did not help George Washington cut the cherry tree down. That's one thing for sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nobody's even sure he cut that tree down, don't you know? <laughs> you ought to ask her as well, too. We'll you get the de- <laughs> We'll get to Debbie Yates in just a minute, talk about uh, some of the role models, memorialized, and another name, woman of many names. Listen to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Apple, and Google Play. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel and take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. We're here with author Deborah Yates, the author of Woman of Many Names, available on Amazon. It's about Nancy Ward, the woman who helped shape the history of our nation. She had ties to Daniel Boone and George Washington, and also served as a role model akin to Joan of Arc. You can just uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I'm really not sure where that Joan of Arc came from. My uh, publisher, you know, he just said, you know, you know, Debra, he goes, think about this. He said, you know, if your grandmother hadn't been where she was supposed to be when she was supposed to be there, then all these other things wouldn't have taken place if she would have died in the Battle of Taliwa. And the Battle of Taliwa happened in northern Georgia, around Ball Ground, Georgia. And her husband was struck down, um, you know, by a Creek warrior. And she had been kind of injured herself. And at that juncture, she picked up his his lands and and went after the enemies, even though the um, you know the war chief had told everybody to you know retreat. Mm-hmm. And she said, you know, it's like no, this, they killed my man, and I'm going after him. So when when that happened, you know, had she fallen? 
you know, what would happened in history. Mm-hmm. You know, how history could have been so different, how so many settlers could have died because she sent warnings into villages, you know, next door and, you know, 10 miles down the road and 50 miles away, you know, that we're in imminent danger of attacks from our from our people. And, um, you know, she risked her life and her limbs to um, protect innocent women and children and, and people of other settlements. She just, you know, after the Battle of Taliwa, she knew her, her path would had to be directed towards peace, not towards war. And, you know, we all have that, you know, line that we have to cross somewhere in our own mind, even in just everyday life, it seems like. And, you know, do we choose the red path to peace or we, you know, the red path to war or the white path to peace? And she made, um, you know, a decision that she was going to work for peace in the country that she lived in, a safe place for her children and her grandchildren to live and go into the future. And and her land was supposed to be held by the government for as long as America was America for her and her seed, her children. And, of course, you know, that was another treaty that got broken eventually. But, you know, and my family and the Cherokee Nation actually, you know, approached Congress back in the 60s to to give um, give them those lands back that were promised, you know, you know, a couple hundred years ago. You know, you're going back on your word. This this needs to be reinstated for this woman's legacy for what she did for this country. And, well, don't you know they turned us down? <laughs> but what did happen about two years ago was the the town where the book is really you know mostly based around in this one is called Chota. And Chota is near Fort Loudoun, uh, Tennessee, and the, um, this, the the government actually gave it back to the Cherokee, the Eastern Band Cherokee. So, um, you know, one good thing has come of that, you know, and there's other lands they could give back to the Native Americans if they really wanted to. Mm-hmm. And, and I think would be a splendiferous, you know, opportunity to to pay homage to you know, the seven, at least the seven civilized tribes that, you know, if there's some of our lands that we could have back would be amazing mm-hmm. and would be, be, I think, seen as such a red flag or a peace flag, a white flag. I'm not sure which flag you would call that. Mm-hmm. But what a, what a great thing that would be for our government to, to do to allow some of our peoples um, from one end of this country to the other to go back to our old homelands that nobody's using anyways that are just being held or at least allow us the right to live on them again. Mm-hmm. You know, people go, oh, well, these people are living on these, you know, in these territories and these reservations and stuff, you know, do, 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 do. Well, what you don't understand is, is those Native Americans can't do anything with that land. Mm-hmm. That, it's not really theirs. They can't go get a loan to build a house on that land. Right. Because it's not theirs. And folks just really don't mm-hmm. understand that, you know, yeah, it may sound hunky dory to everybody else, but go try to live that. You know, you could move your a mobile home on there, but that's nothing that you can hand down to your children in fifty years. You know, it's gonna fall apart. It's not it's not it's not brick, it's not stone, it's not, you know, timber of the earth that's big and strong and you know how we used to live. I mean, imagine spending every day, every waking moment, every sleeping moment surviving. Mm-hmm. Just surviving and then having everybody after you. The French are after you. The Spanish are after you. The Mexicans are after you. The French are after you. The colonialists are after you. Can you imagine having to, to live like that and everybody being your enemy? Oh, well, oh, well, you know, she sure did flip flop on her decisions. I said, yeah, stick a thousand men outside your camp with a thousand guns and see what you'll do. Mm -hmm. Okay, You know, you have to roll with the ebb and the tide. You have to do at the moment what is correct to do for your people. And that's what O'Connor, Atacula, Doublehead, Nancy Ward, and all these, and and even Dragging Canoe. I mean, he's, you know, a different, you know, her cousin who was a famous, you know, he was a brutal warrior, but he was sticking up for our people. He was off doing what, you know, the Cherokee couldn't because, you know, we were a friendly people for the most part and very, you know, gracious and kind and, oh, okay, well, let's like, 
It teaches people how to live and how to eat and how to survive here. Oh, well, darn, drat, we shouldn't have done that. And, you know, dragging canoe, he sected off and, and um, became Chickamauga, a Chickamauga Cherokee. Mm -hmm. And um, that sect was like our warring sect. And then you have the Kituas or the Kituas, however you want to say that word. Depends on what part of the country, uh, how they call that word, which means protectors like the police. So that became a different sect. So you've got all these different, you know, branches off of, you know, what originally leads back to who was hanging out on Martha's Vineyard, you know. So you Martha's know, Vineyard. Oh, my yeah, goodness. Yeah, Martha's Vineyard, you know. Indians lived on Martha's Vineyard. Go figure. Uh, yeah, it gets interesting, doesn't it? So, you know, we, we were very sophisticated people that lived here. We had trading routes. For maybe thousands of years, from the west coast to the east coast to the north to south, into Canada, you know that's not stupid people. Mm -hmm. That is very intelligent, you know, um, minded people. And you know, I I get so, you know, hurt sometimes when people, oh, they're just dirty Indians. Oh, oh okay. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? We took baths every day, you know. Right, right. Well, but they scout people. Oh, but guess what? No, sorry. Uh, the English taught us how to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, do unto others, you know. I mean, you know, it all leads back to somewhere. But I believe God had an absolute divine plan for this country. And my grandmother was part of it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's amazing, too. And, of course, uh, she's also known as... Nan Yahi. Did I say that right? The Trail of Tears? Did I say that Na right? Nan Yahi? Nan Yahi. Yeah. Nan Yahi. Okay. She's Nan known by that name, also known yeah. as the Trail of Tears, one of the great American tragedies. So tell us all about that. Well, Nan Yahi doesn't mean Trail of Tears. Um, what my grandmother did was approximately 30 years before her death, she said she had a vision and she told her family that she saw her people walking in a line with tears streaming down their face. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, th and out of that came Trail of Tears. But what also came out of that was a very large part of my family evacuated themselves from the Tennessee, the Georgia, the Carolina areas because of what she said. They revered her. And, you know, if Nanyahi had a vision you can just about bet it's coming true sometime or another. So we evacuated a lot of a lot of my family did not walk the trail of tears. They went as what is referred to as old settlers. Uh -huh. And um those folks started, you know, leaving, you know, in the early eighteen hundreds, you know, probably the eighteen twenties, I believe, is about when they started to evacuate mm -hmm. because the writing was on the wall that we weren't you know, not wanted where we were at. They wanted our lands. They wanted our gold mines. They wanted our silver mines. They wanted our assets that, that we had. And um, they were ours. You know, they were on our homestead. You know, everything was kind of lotted up. And, you know, you had you lived here, you lived here. And, and when you go back and you look at those old rolls, when they seized those properties, it would say one house one barn, three sheds, five acres cleared. Oh, my goodness. A gold mine or a silver mine. And guess what they got paid for? How much? They got paid for those five cleared acres, even though they might have held 5000 5000 So that would mean in today's economy, that would be about... What would that no, be about? I don't understand. They had 500 acres. Oh, they I, had five oh, oh, I'm, sorry. I, I'm sorry. I thought acres. you said $5,000. I thought that's what you said. Yeah. It's like $5,000. No. It's like, no, what, they, what's that in today's economy? They might have had 5,000 acres, but they only got paid for five. Now, I, I saw the numbers at one time, doll, and I am absolutely cannot recall off the top of my knot, um, my head what those numbers were, what that came down monetarily to. But what they did was they kept the money. They gave everybody a free, uh, not free, but it paid for the transportation of the people out west on those trails of tears. Huh. So they actually 
took the money. They, they, they didn't really, like, get any money. Mm-hmm. Oh, my <laughs> they goodness. They the money and used that money, supposedly, to feed for food and transportation to um, – take them out west Mm -hmm. that is amazing too and uh, we'll talk about an influential director we're great not making a movie about uh, nancy war we'll get to that in just a minute you listen to the mike wagner show at the mike wagner show.com powered by sonic web studios visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all he needs Looking for a professional website without breaking your budget? Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show. Give me her on the Mike Wagner Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and iTunes, Apple, and Google Play as well, too. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device and subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. We're here with author Deborah Yates, woman of many names, available on Amazon. It's about Nancy Ward, a woman who has helped shape the history of our nation, and she had ties to Daniel Boone and George Washington. She served as a role model for young girls, a kin of Joan of Arc, and uh, there was an influential director that regretted not, not making a movie by her life. That's Ilya Kazan. So you can just uh, tell us all about that. <laughs> His name was Ilya Kazan. Kazan. Okay. Kazan. I'm glad you I'm glad you mentioned it. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know that was gonna come up. Um, let me tell you, he was a famous director back in the forties, fifties, and sixties. Mm-hmm. And he spent uh quite a bit of time in the Tennessee area and he uh made several movies in Tennessee somewhere, and one of them was about the Tennessee River and how they dammed that up and um, for the um, TVA. And so um, while he was there and he stayed, I guess they were there quite a few months, the locals, you know, were telling him stories about Chota and about Nancy Ward and Fort Loudon and um, also different stories about a, um, a the man that did our syllabary that was from that area also. And um, so he he couldn't find a script. He couldn't find, you know, enough, um, you know, somebody to write a good enough script to do a movie on on Nancy Ward, in, which would have been so cool. But in other words, did. in other words, lack of research. Well, you know, research now and research then, I'm sure, were two totally different things. Mm-hmm. And think about it being a. Uh, Native American Indian in back in the 40s and 50s and you know most of them were in hiding even the ones that stayed in Tennessee and in the Carolinas you know I don't think they really put themselves out there that much because of the discrimination in that time and certainly there was enough mistrust between people that they just would, weren't weren't giving up those stories I didn't know any better uh. <laughs> I'm giving those stories up that I've heard because you know um, it's only it's only right that um that people understand where you know the in native americans are coming where in e- in each individual um race has a story to tell and i i find it you know so amazing that you know the the re- re- revival of people being interested in in our people in our culture and how it's influenced you know um, you know, America, it's, you know, and, and also how it was shunned by Americans, too. So, mm-hmm. you know, we just, you know, have to look into our hearts and say, you know, you know, it's time for everybody to forgive each other, you know, not deny what happened, but accept what happened, because nobody is alive that did any of those things. Nobody. Right. You know, they've been dead a couple hundred years, for goodness sakes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, why can't we just set it? set it to the side as you know as it was like when I edited my book out you know it it was hard to you know I had to take out some anger because there was anger did start to creep in because I really felt like you know Nancy was telling the story with my hands Mm -hmm. and with my mind 
and how could you not be um, angry about what has happened to you know the people that were our original people you know and if you've got half a heart how could you not not have compassion mm -hmm. for people that that have been altered forever you know that the rate of depression amongst you know uh, natives is astounding I it's bet. astounding they believe that it literally that our conquering changed our dna mm -hmm. and and gave us great sadness and can you imagine you know leaving you know tennessee with 15 family members and and only two or three making it to, to oklahoma and you get there and all the kids are dead oh my. and all the elders are dead because that's what happened it took out the young and it took out the old and so we had generations, you know, that were lacking, you know, children. I mean, they had to get busy once they got out there recreating families again. And, you know, it, we lost, you know, at least two-thirds, I believe, two-thirds of our children. Mm -hmm. I believe that's how many we lost. We, we can pretty much believe that we lost 16,000 people on the trail. I believe, I might be in this by myself, but that we lost at least 16,000 before the tr anybody ever went on the trail Wow! in our imprisonment uh, or our detainment, whatever you want to call that. Um, the, the conditions were horrible. There was lots of people in a small area, and we all know what happens when that happens. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was fall. Oh, here, let me grab my coat and shoes. Oh, no, get out of here. You know? Oh, it, it's, it's like they just... Up. It's like they, they're forced to leave possessions, but fine. They had to just walk Everything. out right. Walk right out. Absolutely. Wow. Wherever you were. If you were in bed, you walked out in your nightie. And, you know, that's just that was just cruel beyond any measure of anything, you know, not to allow people to pack up some of their possessions, what they could fit in their cart or, you know, whatever. I don't know. We can't change it, but um, it, it is heart rendering. And if you can't see that you know that and people are still angry about it today and i get it i do i, mm -hmm. I swear i get it I, but I, you know i just, i understand too and do you, do you think the relations of the cherokee and the and its people and also with america has that improved um by any chance throughout the years i think that it has in a lot of ways i mean we're it's they they have their own government. They have, you know, some of their own health care. Um, we're, you know, we're just, or they are just fixing to open a medical school in Tahlequah, Oklahoma, um, where people are going to come and study medicine. Nice. And, and through that, the hope is, is that a lot of these kids that are going to go through this school are going to see the need on these reservations or whatever you want to call them nations you know if you look at a map it says reservation you know you look at another map it says nation but there are so many deserving people living in these places in the middle of nowhere that need health care mm -hmm. they need dentists they need psychiatrists psychologists and a lot of our young people that are going to be doctors and so on and so forth they come from great privilege already you know, uh, more than, you know, 10% of these kids are, are coming from doctors and stuff themselves. Their parents and their grandparents were physicians. And I, I am just hoping that that somewhere along the line people see the need and, and do something here for these people. You know, we, we do need to go into other countries and help, but we need to look at home. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, they don't have to go there and live forever. I'm not saying that. But, you know, open, you know, small clinics and hospitals that, you know, these people can get training for. And that, and that these people can be, you know, getting health care and dentistry and a mental health care that's so sorely needed in these places. You know, I think the Cherokee um, government is doing an amazing job of that. The Western Band Cherokee, all their monies that they raise from their um, casinos and so on and so forth goes into those programs. And, you know, we're, we're a self-sustaining government out there. They are. And it's a beautiful thing. 
it, it, it is a beautiful, beautiful thing. That it's a role model for for any business, uh, you know that you know that wants to see, you know, how somebody does something maybe just a little bit different and still succeeds. Mm-hmm. It's and we've elected a new chief out there, or they have elected a new chief. I'm not a member of the Cherokee tribe myself. But I couldn't. My my soul is one hundred percent Cherokee, and I am a mutt. Trust me, I am a true mutt. <laughs> it, it sounds like everybody too. It's like having these uh, mixed breeds and everything else. And and of course, yeah. and of course, another question as well too, which just came to mind. You know, with the with the presence of the Cherokee and the other tribes, how well do you think they will be working with uh, Donald Trump getting these uh, issues resolved? You know. <sighs> With the climate of things, you know, it, I, it doesn't look real good. <laughs> um, but, you know, he's probably looking at things a whole lot differently than what they do. I mean, I think he's coming at it with a business head. And I think um, that Native Americans and maybe all people are coming at it from a different place. And because we don't all have business minds and they think differently. Mm-hmm. than other people do it takes a lot to be able to run a a major corporation and you know as well as i do they think different they they just do uh, politicians think differently than businessmen housewives think differently than everybody mm-hmm. you know it just depends on what your experiences are i think that you know um that hopefully someday here real soon that people are just gonna um be glad for what we have going on right now we have elections in this country for a reason every four years and if if that many people don't like our president then they need to go vote Mm -hmm. and and that's amazing too and of course the best power out nancy war she's memorialized in benton tennessee by federal historical marker and um i guess the question is uh why benton tennessee well after chota was destroyed Um, General Severe actually took her prisoner, and he wrote Thomas Jefferson a letter. And in that letter, he said, I do not know what to do with Nancy Ward. Thomas Jefferson wrote him a letter back saying, ask Nancy Ward what to do with Nancy Ward. She will know best. He let her go. (laughs) That is amazing. (laughs) He let her go. There you go. (laughs) <laughs> he basically moved to Benton, Tennessee, on the Okohe River, just south, just south of Benton, and um, she had a, a mill where um, you know what you know they do at mills. They make grain and different stuff like that, and you could actually kind of still see where the old mill sat. And then she opened an inn, and it was called Woman Killer Ford. <laughs> Woman and, Killer uh, Ford. Interesting. Woman <laughs> Killer Ford. So she, <laughs> I like some uh, Woman Killer Ford, please. Yeah, woman, <laughs> and, and, uh, let me off this river. I want to stay at Woman Killers over here. <laughs> you want fries with that? <laughs> and there you go. They got good beans over there. Oh, my goodness. I can <laughs> well, imagine. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'll have to can eat there imagine? sometime. <laughs> can you imagine? So I've actually been to the... Uh, to the site, you know, and seeing the foundation stones and stuff where, where her, um, her inn and her home actually was. And she lived and died there as well as her brother and son also lived and died there. And they're all three now, uh, buried not too far from where that old inn sat. So, um, uh, when I discovered that I was just going to a park that was named after my granny, you know, my cousin caused me on lounging on the beach in uh, let's see i think it was south carolina Mm -hmm. or charleston wherever charleston is and uh, she goes did you know our grandmother had a park named after her and i said well i absolutely did not know our grandmother had a park named after her (laughs) benton tennessee i said well let me look at this here she goes it's by chattanooga and i said well there's no good way from here to chattanooga but let me look at this and I'll call you tomorrow. So I sat down with a map, and I'm going, oh, my gosh. i got to go almost all the way back to Savannah. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Oh, there's no good way. There's no good way from there to uh, Chattanooga, trust me. Oh, my gosh. I go backtracking, and the next day I woke up, and I just – 
I knew I had to go. So <laughs> I loaded up and went to Tennessee. So when I pulls up there, um, it's like, oh my goodness, it's a park, a boat ramp, and oh my lord, she's buried here. Oh no, this cannot be. How did I not know this all these years? We didn't know. I didn't know. So I called my cousin. I said, oh, it gets even better. She's buried here with her son and her brother. And um, so um, that began the journey. That's actually what began this journey to write this book and to tell this tale. And, you know, it's been, you know, a little over three years. And by Jove, I'm still talking to folks. So. I'm just hoping that, you know, somebody's listening will read this and really enjoy it and, you know, tell your friends about it. it it's not the probably the best written book in the world, but um, I'm not the best speller or, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I'm just an older lady that mm -hmm. decided to, to do a, a pen project here and. Um, I hope everybody that does read it enjoys it immensely and gets curious about their own ancestors and where they might have come from. That, that's amazing as well, too. And we're all looking forward to your book as well, too. And uh, what are some of your upcoming projects that you have? Do you have another book coming out or something similar or anything like that? Well, so far, I, I really... There's one place I have to go back to, and that is back to Thomas Jefferson's Monticello. And um, I, I think that I might have more answers there to, to finishing this book. Um, as you can well imagine, having to delve through presidential records and stuff like that from a couple hundred years ago is not easy. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I do have the beginnings of, of another one written and I and I hope to be able to get back to that soon and and you know put another one back out there and finish up the story of Nancy Ward even though it is fairly well documented you can find a lot of stuff online about that my my main concern with this first one was to make sure that Kingfisher my grandmother's husband and my grandfather um, got his um, just due in in literature and to know a little bit more about him as well as the culture of, of the ancient, you know, Cherokee and kind of what we were about. Nancy Ward held the power of life and death in her hands. They made her wings. Um, there is some discrepancy about that. My grandfather told me they were swan wings, that she wore swan wings when she would do her um, tribal type duties. And if she took her hand and went to the right with it, you got to go. And if she went to the left with it, you weren't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. She had the power of life and death in her hands. And, you know, um, to think back on a woman in the 1700s and the 1800s welding that sort of power mm -hmm. among her own people, how, um, you know awe-inspiring was could that be right how intimidating that could be because other cultures that were all around us didn't see women as being useful figures as you you know we we know mm -hmm. uh, about about history and about how women have been um looked upon uh, before and some even now but um there were great women. Joan of Arc absolutely was one of those. And Nanya He, Nancy Ward was one of those. And there are so many other great women in history that, you know, lived and survived and, and ruled and ruled well. Mm -hmm. And that, I am looking forward to our first female president. Absolutely. That's and, a, that sounds amazing. We'll talk more about that. And once again, what's your website and how do people contact you? Um. Um, it's um, you just go to um, Facebook and uh, search "Woman of Many Names" and um, like it, and from there you can get in touch with me with any questions that you might have, or um, you know, just any type of communication in that result, and um, you know, find out about upcoming events. You can you know hear, read, see you know different things that I've done in the past too. 
That's amazing, too. And once again, Deborah Yates, the author of Woman of Many Names, available on Amazon. And just wanted to say a big thank you for your time. You've been fantastic. Looking forward to having you on again soon. And uh, please do everybody a favor and keep us up to date. Oh, thanks so much. Mike, it's been a pleasure. It truly has been. Thank you. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. Also, become a sponsor of the program and or donate today at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of The Mike Wagner Show.